The Industrial Development Corporation has allegedly loaned 8.5 billion rand to 128 black industrialists since April 2017. And according to media reports, those involved as IDC beneficiaries include former executives of the Development Bank of Southern Africa, the Land Bank, the Public Investment Corporation, the IDC itself, and state-owned entities. This may be an indication of double dipping by a small pool of executives benefiting from lucrative state contracts. However, the IDC has rubbished the elegant as unfounded. Okay. And now we are joined on Skype by Solim Weng, Reputation Management Advisor for Don Valley Reputation Manager. Good evening, Solim. Good evening. Good evening, Jules. Nice to yeah, to audience. Well, here's another state funding institution that's in the news for, for the wrong reasons, or apparently the wrong reasons. Of course, they, they defend their, their activities quite vehemently, but um, mm -hmm. there seem to be quite a few people, certainly lots of members of the public, who seem well, remain unconvinced. Um, mm -hmm. Amongst them, Zuelin Zima Vavi, suggesting mm -hmm. that this is another example of hijacking of uh, broad-based black economic empowerment? Well, I, I think those, yeah, those people who are suspicious of the right and the reason to be suspicious. I think each time these big deals come up, we see the same names or names of people who are very closely politically connected to the ruling party come up at the top of the cream. And this cannot be right. We, uh, who knows the same thing is going to happen with, the, with land expropri expropriation same thing that happened in Zimbabwe. Are we going to see people who are connected to the ruling party coming the first ones to benefit from these things? So they, the IDC has to tell us how these things work. How do ordinary South Africans, black South Africans, benefit to, uh, come to benefit from these opportunities? Is it just for ANC-linked people? Well, uh, there's been a suggestion that, you know, because obviously in the list that was published, there's quite a few... Um, uh, black executives of state-owned companies, uh, directors, etc., right. etc. There's been a suggestion that there's actually a fairly small pool of black executives in the country, and that that somehow is reflected in the in the names that you see. Uh, do you buy that argument? Well, it, it becomes a problem when those when that very small that. But it becomes a problem when it, it turns out to be names who are already benefiting from other opportunities created by the ruling party. We need to create, if the ANC is to create opportunities for black people in general, they should not matter whether the people are linked to the ANC or the, to the DA or to the uh, ESF or to any other party. They should say, look at, uh, at, at black people who have the opportunity and the, and the know-how, the ability, the capacity to come up with new ideas, and they should look at those things not from a non-political perspective and find good ideas. But what seems to be happening now is that the first beneficiaries are people who are linked politically, and it, it's this is not different from state capture. It's not different from what's happened with the VBS and other corruption that has been taking place around the country. It's always the same people. I think South Africans are really, really tired of what's going on. Um, um, I'd like to see a, a wider discussion on this happen because, because this, this is a, a complex issue on, on many fronts and it, and it has many facets to it. So if you look at the, the, the structure of the South, Af South African economy now, we know that there's a great deal of concentration of wealth. Um, mm -hmm. That's in racial terms. There's also a great mm -hmm. deal of, of concentration of um, corporate power, if you will, because of the oligopolistic mm -hmm. structure of the a lot of South African industries, whether it's banking or food or whatever. And right. then, and all of this, of course, stifles innovation, entrepreneurship, and SMMEs. And then, on mm -hmm. the other hand, there's also the fact that, in fact, the the the, the most unequal component of the South African population is actually the black population. It's got a higher Gini mm -hmm. coefficient than the rest of the country, if you will. Now, against, right. against that background, you almost think the same imperative we have for transforming in a racial sense to widen mm -hmm. access to opportunities and skills and jobs, etc., probably applies mm -hmm. to the whole country as well. Right? I mean, am I, am I wrong in my, in, my, in my analysis that 
concentration in any form, um, in any segment of, of, mm. of, of our population is, is destructive. You're almost building an oligarchy of sorts. Yeah, it, is, this is what's happening. And look, there are, I know many black people, black South Africans with amazing ideas who have knocked on doors, whether it's the, 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 um, the independent, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, the, the, some of these funding organizations, uh, you know, created by government, the, the, the empowerment fund and others. And they, they get pushed back because of technicality. Somebody tells them they didn't complete the forms correctly, something is missing, and this is missing. People with really good opportunities, but they get pushed back on technicalities. But people who are politically connected, who are very few, end up with big, and, and those are the guys who come, up, come, come and walk away with billions. You know, if you spread that money a lot more around, you would end up with more South Africans benefiting from those opportunities from the fund, from the pool of fund that exists. But you, you get you get people going away with five million billion or four or ten billion or or hundred thousand million hundred million million rands, they get pushed away because nobody knows them. So you need to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So I think that, you know, we have to be clear about what is going on here. Is the ANC out to to create a, a group of its own people that that, that, that that have, you know, so so and so telephone number to benefit from these opportunities? Or are they seriously out to create opportunities to create a, a sustainable middle class uh, an upper class of black people who have ideas and who don't really care about being politically connected, but they just want to be seriously active participants in our economy. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I mean, you, you're, a, you're a, a reputation expert as well. Um, we, yeah. we've, we've seen the similar stories come out about um, the PIC. There's an ongoing story ar ar around that mm -hmm. that I think uh, Bounty Holomisa, amongst others, is pursuing quite, quite aggressively. Right. There's, 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 whether the, these stories are, are valid or accurate or not, they mm -hmm. certainly have a, a reputational impact on these institutions, don't they? Definitely, yeah. There's no doubt about it. I think perceptions matter. It could be that somebody could come up and say, but look at the figures. We had 15.3 billion rents uh, budgeted in over the past years. Um, and they say, they come back and say 11 billion rents has been given out to 83 constra constra um, uh, uh, transactions. Let's look at who the beneficiaries are. Are they all political? It could be that statistically the, the numbers will fail, will, will, give, will end up with more people who are not linked politically benefiting. But the thing is, the perception is already that uh, people who are politically connected are the first ones to benefit. And it's true. The fact is that people who are politically connected do not have the same hurdles to go over than people who are not politically connected. So the perception is already that either the state, there was the big, the bigger state capture program, but there's also another program where if you want to benefit, you have to be known to be a supporter of the political party or to know somebody who can call somebody who can call somebody. There is not a sense out there that it's the door is open for everyone to benefit and that's a big problem so Ali, Cindy Mabi here uh, just a very quick question Actually. in the sense of how yeah. do we e e enable a, a sustainable middle class a black middle class that will then uh, open up or hopefully start um, industries that are sustainable mm. and create necessary employment if we do not utilize the government instruments as our counterparts would have done in pre under the, mm. the, the, the previous regime. So the point is, while this may sound unethical, I want to ask, is mm. it illegal for a former executive of a state entity to do business with the state? Well, we, need, we have to look at what the opportunities are. The thing is, somebody who works in, an, in a state institute and then they jump outside and it's like within weeks after jumping out, they suddenly beneficiaries of, of big deals, of big funding opportunities. That's problematic. It means that you have to be there first to create conditions for you to jump out. And then it's almost like a javelin. You throw it out there, you go to the other side to catch it, to, to, to catch it. I think that or what the government, there's nothing wrong with the government trying to, to create a black middle class. I don't think that 
there is a perception out there that it's you may be not all the blacks are called. You can be black, but you don't. If you know the the, the right black, meaning the right politically connected black, you're not going to go and benefit from these opportunities. That is the problem. The, we have the government has to create a very clear environment out there that shows any black person with an amazing idea that they can benefit from this. And there's a, there are opportunities to go into the fourth industrial revolution, not just create, pe give people money to, to become, to go into uh, existing uh, value chains of existing businesses or the traditional uh, industries, if you want. There are opportunities to, to go to partner, for instance, with universities, with, the, with research, research institutions, to look at young people who are looking for a future economy of South Africa. And there are, these people do exist in the fourth industrial revolution. How do you find those people? They don't have to be politically connected. But the thing is, we have to take away whether it's a perception, perception reality, and I think there's a bit of reality in there, that uh, you, you have to know somebody to benefit. And that is a problem. Now, my, my issue is just that it tends to be singled out and hugely focused mm. on the black industrialists where we forget they are multinationals who have over the years and evergreen contracts benefited from preferential treatment when it comes to state opportunities that if mm. we say we need to sterilize uh, the da database and ensure that opportunities mm. are given and hopefully also compartmentalize so that it, it, it benefits more people, then I'm okay right. with that. The issue, it seems, that we're always targeting uh, what would be black executives, black industrialists in this particular case. No, we should, look, um, I think that we should be, uh, we should understand that people, the, a lot of wrong things have been happening in, in South Africa. So people are almost automatically uh, suspicious whenever somebody, uh, look, we saw the list of the industrialists who came out at the top. Some of them, or most of some of the people at the crop are politically connected people. So you should expect South Africans to feel what's going on. The, the fact that other people might have made the same mistakes in the past doesn't mean that we have to repeat the same mistakes. We have to be prepared to lead. We have to say, this is how they did it during apartheid or in other parts of the world, but we have to do it differently here in South Africa. We can't constantly be saying, but it happened in the past, so why can't we do it in the present? The fact that South Africans, the broader South African community, is tired of corruption. They are tired of state capture. They are tired of the same people benefiting from a hundred billion dollar bill. You, in South Africa, there are too many, too many black people with ideas who are knocking on doors all the time, looking for opportunities, being turned away for all sorts of little technicalities. But big guys don't even have to fill in forms. We know that. There are people who are connected politically who do not have to fill in forms. Somebody says, before an opportunity gets put into the market, it already has a name in it. We know it, that's happening, and that's wrong. I mean, as a final question, what, what, what would you think should be done? I mean, um, in, 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 in trying to create the landscape that you're talking about, without compromising mm -hmm. on, on, on the whole transformative um, agenda yeah. that we're all trying to pursue? Look, we know for sure that the industrial, uh, the black industrialist program is, is more political, uh, which is fine, than economic. Industries where traditional uh, other investors maybe might be a, bit, a lot more careful. We know that they will put give money to people that perhaps traditional funders will not uh, put money into. What we want is for there to be less political control, less political influence. We want professionals to run these opportunities, the IDC and others, and without looking at political considerations, find black people with ideas. It is, even if they are black people who are in the, in the DA, the SSA, the, the EFA, the IFP, other political parties, we want to create a whole variety, diversity of black people with ideas and fund them and get them to be serious leaders, is, is, leaders in our economy. But if you're going to look at a small a, a pool of people coming from the ANC or linked to the ANC, we're getting it wrong altogether. All not all black people are ANC people. Not all black people are linked, uh, can, can call directly into, you know, the, you know, the powerful offices of the ANC. But there are many black people out there with amazing ideas and who can play seriously significant roles in the economy if given the opportunity, the same opportunities that get given to the people who like Sandy, uh, Sandy Lezungu and all these, uh, Diego Moseneko and all these other guys. Um, uh, and thanks for joining us this evening.
And that's Solim Wang, reputational manager and advisor for Don Valley Reputation Managers. Mm -hmm. Thanks indeed, uh, you at home, for joining us as well. One thing I can say, Rome was not built in one day. And uh, it's tough. A not. lot of yeah. black businesses will tell you if you're not being liquidated, your house is on auction. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're on a diet of cabbage <laughs> and water. You know, yeah. but Taluta continua. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's all we have for you this evening on Prime Business. Join us again tomorrow night at the same time. Good night.